There's just something really awesome about a handmade gift. It shows that the person really went the extra mile, that they were thoughtful. And one of the ways to do that is having a really personalized and customized gift. So on today's episode, we are going to be doing 10 handmade gifts that she'll actually want for Mother's Day. So let's get started. I want all of these things. That's why I know these gifts are good is because like everyone, I'm like, I want that, I want that. I am making some for my mom and my mother-in-law, but this one I'm gonna just use myself as an example and I might make it two different ways. So for my first project, we are going to be making a leather bracelet or I should say faux leather bracelet with names of all the kids on it. First, you're gonna need to start out by getting the measurement of the wrist of the person you are making it for. Then you're gonna add one and a half inches to that measurement. Then you're going to need some kind of faux leather or vinyl. I compared these two versions and I ultimately decided to go with the brown toned one because I thought it was a little bit thicker and it would create a much higher contrast next to the iron on vinyl that I'm going to be using. Then you're going to cut it 5 8 inch plus one and a half inches more than the wrist measurement so in my case the dimensions were seven and a half inches by five eighths inch. I use a rotary cutter and this makes the process really easy but you can definitely cut this out by hand as well. So for all of the projects where I do use my Cricut machine just because it's easier and it gets like a cleaner nicer look in the end I will provide an alternative to how to complete the project if you don't have a Cricut machine. I go into Cricut Design Studio and type in my children's names starting with an underscore before and after and instead of a space in between. When you switch this into the I Love Glitter font that you can find at defont.com, the underscore turns into a heart. Make sure you tighten up the letters and size it down to fit within that 5 8 width. I would say if you have more than three or four children, to increase the width of the bracelet and add another row of names appropriate to the number of children. But I would say about three to four names per line. I cut this out on champagne colored iron-on adhesive and weed it. I set my easy press to 300 degrees, but you can definitely use a regular iron. Then I use a paper towel to protect the fabric and my press. I warm up the surface first, then I lay down my iron-on vinyl and press it in 30 second increments until ultimately ended up sticking, which is about three or four times. I gave it a little bit of a break in between each session, so you're just going to want to check each time by peeling back a little corner just a little bit. Now for a couple of alternatives. First you could always hand write the names on with gold paint pen or gold sharpie. I don't really like my handwriting so I'm very grateful that I have a Cricut machine to do this for me. I was never destined to be a teacher. Another option is, is you could just make a cute blingy leather bracelet. I found these rhinestone strips at the Dollar Tree. They already have adhesive on them, so I just peel them off and stuck them on. So far, it's staying on well, but for a little extra support, it does come with some super glue. I've actually never used these snaps before, so this is gonna be the first time. As far as attaching the snaps, there are some handy diagrams and instructions on the back of the box. I picked this kit up at Michael's Curbside Pickup, these are actually pretty boring looking to be honest with you and they have much prettier ones on Amazon. I wished I had planned better ahead for, which I will order for the future. But basically you're going to shove the circles with the teeth through the vinyl. I found a pencil eraser very handy for this process to push it through without hurting your fingers. Then you're gonna put the corresponding snap in between the device and hammer it on. It wasn't too difficult at all. It's almost a snap. <laughs> Pun intended. I just love how these turned out. I paired it with the blingy one and I think it makes a really nice set. My sweet husband kind of giggled at my handwritten one and said that maybe I shouldn't show that one on camera, but I think it's funny. <laughs> So I thought I'd share and I know that there are people out there like my mother with much better penmanship where this would actually turn out looking very good. But in the end, this beautiful gift only cost me about a dollar to a dollar fifty per bracelet. My number two project is a keychain. Now, this is a pre-existing project on Cricut and it just says mom. All you need to do is go into Cricut Design Studio and hit make it. I will be cutting mine out in the same pink vinyl I used in the previous project. 
So I'll provide a link for that Cricut project in the description box below, so check there for that. And if you don't have a Cricut machine, I have provided something similar as a printable, and that will be in the description box below. So you can print that out and use it as kind of like a pattern template, and you can cut that out by hand. Once you have cut out the project, it is really easy to put this together. I tried various types of glue, but in the end, E6000 was the best for the job. I would not use hot glue as it dries kind of thick and hard and it caused a little bit of separation, but with the E6000, you can squish it down pretty flat. Now you could just put in the ring and call it a day, but I decided to dress mine up a little bit more using some of that rhinestone bling from their previous project. Now speaking of the ring, I bet you have an extra one lying around somewhere. I know I did. This this is a very quick and easy yet cute Mother's Day gift and I think it pairs nicely with the bracelets we did earlier and at only a dollar at tops for this project it is a great price. Next up, we are going to be making a serving tray out of a wood round and some handles. And I have to be honest with you, I am really becoming a fan of these wood rounds that you can get at Home Depot for about $6. They are so versatile and look great in decor. So you'll be seeing me probably using these in various applications and for various things. We're going to start out by taking my bottomless pit of Kona gel stain and staining the front and sides, making sure to wipe off any excess. You're going to wait a few hours for this to dry, then you're going to need some sort of stencil with a monogram and last name and the year established. Now, my camera automatically turned off during this part, so I don't know what happened when I painted it, but I did take some black chalk paint and dab it on with a makeup sponge. If you do not have access to stencil you could just design something on your computer and use an image transfer technique using a printout and some graphite paper as shown here then just paint it out by hand it's actually not really much more work to do it this way while the paint is drying, I take some handles that I picked up at Hobby Lobby a while back and just wrap them in some twine using some Gorilla hot glue to hold it in place at the beginning and the end. I just think that this adds a bit more character. Then I just give a light sanding to distress the edges a bit for more of a time-worn look prior to giving it a coat of quick drying polyurethane. Then I pre-drill some holes and screw on the handles and that's it. Such a classy high-end look at such a great price of only $12. I'm totally obsessed with this. Next up, we are going to be making a picture pendant, kind of like a lock idea, but um, instead of opening and closing, it's just for display. Now, as kids get older and they move apart, it's really hard to get a picture together. So you could just go on to some photo editing software like PicMonkey. I personally like to use Canva. Since my locket is an oval shape, I place an oval on my page to kind of give me a general outline. I pull up the pictures I preloaded and I remove the background of these photos. Now this is a feature on their paid version, but there are a ton of apps out there that can remove the backgrounds of photos. You can also do all of what I'm doing on PicMonkey if you prefer. And I just place everyone's photos together until it kind of fits nicely within the oval shape. And then I download the image with no background and place it into Canva's oval frame and shrink it down to the size of my pendant. Then I cut it out and I mod podge it on the back and the front into the pendant and allow it to completely dry. Then we need to mix a little bit of resin and you really do not need much for this project. You mix equal parts of resin and even though this video is speeded up, it's better if you mix this resin very slowly so that there will be less air bubbles and you do this about one to three minutes. Then you're gonna very carefully pour your resin into the pendant until it mounds 
ever so slightly above the ledge without spilling over. In the end, I did have one or two air bubbles in mine that I could have easily gotten rid of had I had sprayed some rubbing alcohol onto it at the end, but unfortunately, I didn't have an extra spray bottle on hand. You need to allow it to dry fully about 18 to 24 hours. Even with the minor blemishes, I am extremely happy with how this turned out and at a price of only $4 for such a meaningful memento, it was an absolute bargain. Next up, we're going to be etching this trifle dish. Now this would work on any kind of glass dish that you have. We are going to just be writing the word like delish. You could do yummy. You could do um, like something custom with like the name. I just love typography in general. So you will need some sort of stencil to get this job done. So if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, this is a time where you would probably need to order a stencil or something. I center my stencil on my trifle dish and peel back the transfer tape. Then I take my Armor Etch Cream and generously place it over my word, making sure not to miss any spots. And I just kind of pounce this on with a brush instead of going back and forth. You want to let this sit on the glass for about 15 minutes. If you feel like an area is getting light during that 15 minutes, move some of the cream around or add a little bit more. Then after it's done sitting, take it to your sink and rinse it off. I put on rubber gloves to protect my hands during this process. Use a paper towel to wipe it off and then I also use the paper towel and some dish soap to wash it up. Then all you need to do is dry it off. Now I already had this trifle dish on hand and I believe I picked it up from Walmart for about five dollars so depending on the price of the trifle dish it will determine your end price easily between ten and fifteen dollars with leftover etching cream for other projects. But I really love how this turned out. It's such a showpiece. So my next handmade gift is a very easy project. I picked this up at curbside pickup at Michael's. If you have a picture frame on hand or if you have one from the Dollar Tree, this could be even more affordable for you. But this is an eight and a half by 11. So it's a document size. And all I did is I went into Canva and designed this sign and it says wife and it puts the date and my mom's husband, my dad, <laughs> and mom as year that was established and then all of the children's names and then grandma the year that was established and all of her grandchildren and all we're gonna do is put that inside the frame and it's gonna be super cute and super easy to do but yet very very meaningful even though this was an eight and a half by 11 inch frame it was still slightly too big for the frame so I just trimmed off the edges and placed it in the frame my frame was about six dollars for Michael's curbside pickup but you could definitely get this job done with a Dollar Tree frame for as little as a buck. So for my Christmas gift idea, I did a customized cutting board that was really awesome. And we're gonna be doing one similar idea, a little bit different. So I got this cutting board a couple of months ago, but any cutting board will do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and a scorch marker. Love the scorch marker. I've used it a couple of times. I think it's so much fun. Use a stencil or the graphite tracing technique taught earlier in this episode to put the last name of the person you are giving it to and the year established. Now, if you are using a vinyl stencil, I'm going to forewarn you that this process is kind of a pain. I even used permanent vinyl, but the natural oil in these cutting boards repels it. So it's going to take you a minute and a little extra effort to get this vinyl on the cutting board. And to be honest with you, I don't know why I just tossed this idea out the window and just traced it on with a graphite paper because it is probably a little bit easier, but it's probably because I feel like it gives a nice clean edge when you do use a stencil then you're just going to want to fill it in with a scorch marker and it really doesn't matter how long it sits before you move on to the next step which is taking a heat gun which you can find for about $12 and it's a pretty handy tool to have around for other projects as well then you simply just use the heat gun to burn on your customized image
absolutely love this project and for a little over five dollars you can't beat it who wouldn't love this to be in their kitchen So for my next project, we are going to be making a canvas for our moms. And this is a saying that my husband is always telling me, and it's so true. Home is wherever mom is. So we're gonna be making a canvas that says that. I started with an 18 by 24 inch piece of canvas drop cloth, but use whatever size works for your project. I will provide a link for the image that I used on Cricut, and then I will also provide an image that you can adjust to whatever size will work for your project if you don't have a Cricut machine. And just use it as a template and trace it onto your canvas and paint the image on. I left my edges frayed on purpose. I think it will work in the decor of my mother-in-law's home who I'm making this for. Then I'm just going to simply sew a pocket for the dowel that I have on hand. Now if you don't sew, you can always use hem tape or just hot glue it. Then we're going to iron on our vinyl image. I did this at 330 degrees for 30 seconds two times until my vinyl stuck down. Or again, simply just paint this image on by hand. Then I just took some wooden caps that I painted black and glued them on with hot glue and E6000. And I tied on some twine using a slip knot initially and then turned it into a square knot, cutting off the excess. I really think this would look fantastic in any home, but especially in my mother-in-law's farmhouse. Now I had everything on hand already, but I figure I used about $2 worth of supplies, so not too bad. Okay, so for my next project, I had a couple of different options. So what you're gonna wanna do is find some kind of piece of wood. So I have this scrap piece that I could definitely use. But I also have this sign from the Dollar Tree that I'm not gonna use. So we could either paint over this side or just flip it to the back and paint this out. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of wood, you're gonna paint it out in a white. Next, take four extra long paint sticks that you can buy in packs of three for 99 cents at the Home Depot. I paint out all of the sides in black chalk paint. Then I cut in vinyl my kids' names and birth dates, which are being blocked out for their protection. The script font is brusher and the birth dates were done in Times New Roman. I then apply these to the wood. By now you certainly know what I'm gonna say if you don't have a Cricut machine, just use the image transfer followed by painting technique and it will turn out great, I promise. Now you probably know I'm a huge fan of my power miter saw, but I wanted to show you that you can get this job done without needing one of those. This is just a simple miter box and you can just saw these by hand and cut them down to fit. And if you don't have one of these, you can just use a hacksaw from the Dollar Tree. To attach these, I normally would use a finished nailer, but I also wanted to show you an alternative to attaching it by attaching this frame with E6000 and hot glue. Once this glue dries, it should stick on there pretty darn good. Since I just used scrap wood, I only used about $2 in supplies for this project and I just love this very sentimental piece. So my last but certainly not least handmade gift is going to be a family picture wreath. Honestly, this might be my favorite. We have made some really good DIYs this episode. So what you're gonna need to do is gather up a whole bunch of family photos and I put them all in a two by three inch frame on Canva just to make it easy to keep it consistent look. I made them all black and white. Now you're gonna need a wreath form and I've got this one and this one from the Dollar Tree. You might want a bigger one, honestly. This is what I had on hand, so I'm gonna go with it. Gathering all the photos is probably the biggest part of this job. After you've got them printed out, simply cut them down to size. Then you're gonna need a whole bunch of two by three inch frames. Now you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree, but if you can't get into the Dollar Tree right now, you can also order them for a little bit more on Amazon, not much, and I'll put a link for them below. Then put Put them into the frames and hot 
glue about six or seven inches of grow grain ribbon to the backs of the frame and then you're going to just tie them around the wreath closely together and not cut off the excess ribbon until you are finished. That way you'll be able to adjust them if necessary. When I finished placing them how I liked, I took some ribbon that I got on clearance after Christmas and made a big bow and attached it to the top of the wreath, letting some of the streamers flow down into the wreath. And for just over $15, this is a modern twist on a gallery wall, and it's a wonderful testament to the legacy of your family. I adore this wreath. Now you can see that it's not too hard to get a beautiful and meaningful Mother's Day gift on an extreme budget. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And until next time, to all of my DIY Niners, bye.